I thought I was playing a sim. It turns out if you prick us, we bleed. Jamal Finkley, Black Tree TV. First, I, I have enjoyed the show, uh, and I'm curious. As uh, I know, like right now, this technology seems like, I mean, we're close, but we're not there. But we are in technology of streaming. And I just wonder, as lesbians, how has having all of these new platforms with all these new shows changed the amount of uh, scripts that you guys are reading? Like, how's that process? train change from let's say six years ago to now um as far as the amount of products you, you guys have to make choices on oh gosh i mean that that's a good question look the there's there's been a kind of boom in tv and but you know once again the industry is always changing and evolving these things tend to be cyclical um but the one thing that i think is consistent um for me is you know we uh, we try to just do things that um, attract is not just on an intellectual level, but on a personal level. Because if you don't kind of feel it, if you don't connect with it on more than just the kind of abstract level, it's it's not worth it. You won't bring your best to it, you know. And so uh, when you know Vincenzo brought me this brilliant book by Gibson, the idea of um, slipping into these worlds that were portrayed and the lives of Flynn Fisher and her family and Wolf Netherton in London, that it was a kind of story of transformation and hope and resilience during trying times that really, really resonated because we were in the middle of a pandemic and you know you understood that need for family and solidarity and hope and strength. And so uh, that's why I, I think that's the way that's the reason why everybody should do projects, you know, because they, they feel it on that level and they just can't wait to tell the story with their brilliant collaborators. Yeah. And Vincenzo, like if you really were able to sim or jump into like one of these other bodies, like what like who or what type of body would you wanna like just be in even if like for a temporary moment and be able to like this do an adventure or something question ever no i would not replicate my body i'll tell you right <laughs> now i know that flynn does it and i don't and i that makes sense to me and some of the other characters will but uh i would no i listen uh i, I think i would put myself into gary carr's body because <laughs> that's a good looking guy <laughs> i would want to try to be a guy if i had mm -hmm. a, a sim i would want i'd be curious you know, and be like, yeah. what's up? What's yeah. up in here? <laughs> I, think I would do Simone Biles. Just I, after I'm thinking about it, I think I would want to just be able to flip around a couple of times like Simone Biles in the air. And see what, yeah. yeah, sure. Where, that where, would be where, where, cool where. to have that sense of power. Yeah. Now, uh, this is a question for both of you as, as collaborators. Like, how, how, how much do you think, because like I just left the school of engineering and innovation here. How much do you think people look at these projects and these kind of ideas feed what they work towards? Even if it's not out there, it's like like some some part of the fantasy or stuff that's written in these scripts are, are eventually like worked towards. You do, do you think you fuel some ideas for where technology could go for people? I mean, I think that technology and the arts and culture are always in constant communication. You know, we're all living in the same world. You know, this is water. Like we're all we're all in the same kind of cultural water, absorbing a lot of the same influences. And with the evolution of technology, that that incites more speculation and fiction, which could inspire more evolutions in technology. It's a kind of iterative process that I think has existed. Um, you know, since time immemorial, right? Stories are the first way of um, of embodying an abstract idea. You first embody it with words because mm. words are kind of cheap and they paint a picture without having to make the thing yet, you know? But even a engineer would need 
some kind of words and then a diagram or something mm -hmm. to start bringing the future into life. So we're all just conjuring things together as a society. And it's, it's fun to all be part of this one process. But it does feel a little bit like, and I hate using this word because it's a buzzword, but it was a singularity where the things that we read about as kids in science fiction books are now actually happening. Like we're having this conversation, you're on a screen. 20 years ago, that was, well, not even 20 years ago, 10 years ago, that was science fiction. Yeah. So it does, and then that is a, a very specifically Gibsonian notion that the future exists now, but it is not evenly distributed. And, and that we live in a kind of future and in the past at the same time. And those things are not um, contradictory. So I, I, I kind of, I 100% agree with everything Lisa's saying, and I think it's sort of brought more into focus because we're suddenly seeing things that were purely science fiction notions become part of our everyday lives. Totally. Yeah. Well, I don't know how much I want all of this to come into our life. I think it's some ethical questions about being simple. There's also, it's definitely some plus and minuses that you get to explore throughout this project. Great project. Can't wait till everybody else sees it on, on Prime Video. And you guys keep on, Make your stuff, we'll keep on watching and enjoying it and talking about it. Thank you. Good luck with your speech. Yeah, have fun. <laughs> I want to hear that speech. Kick ass, I got yeah. a feeling it's going to be no. a really good one. The questions are awesome. I'm, I'm going to talk about what we just did in, in this thing. So, so yeah. Amazing. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Arnold. Thank you.